Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the Center for State's video series on the essential functions for monitoring, evaluating, and applying findings. This series is produced by the Capacity Building Center for States and funded by the Children's Bureau. The Monitoring, Evaluating, and Applying Findings Brief is intended to help child welfare agency leaders, managers, and stakeholders take a structured approach to plan for and execute strategies to monitor and evaluate implementation efforts and interventions, strategies to collect and analyze data for a variety of evaluation types, and then using data to make decisions and plan for sustainability of programs where feasible. It does this by providing step-by-step -step guidance to strategize and develop a plan for evaluation, collect and analyze data and consider fidelity and costs, and then use results to make decisions about ongoing efforts and sustainability. The monitoring, evaluating, and applying findings brief is broken down into four parts and 11 essential functions or tasks. It's important to remember that while the steps are presented in a linear way, in practice, often these steps will overlap and be revisited as teams continue to monitor, evaluate, and apply their findings over time. Part one is setting the stage and includes considering the circumstances and needs of the agency, developing a logic model, identifying questions, which is the topic of this module, and identifying the data measures, sources, and collection methods that will answer them, and then developing an evaluation plan. Part two is collect and analyze data, and it includes strategies to put the evaluation plan into place by collecting and analyzing the data outlined, and then two special featured topics that are a version of data collection and analysis. They are examining fidelity and analyzing costs. Part three outlines how to use the data collected to make decisions and adjustments, with two functions on sharing findings and recommendations and then making decisions to further spread, adjust, or discontinue. And then part four is on sustainability planning and how teams should refine and implement a plan to sustain interventions when this is the decision of the team and stakeholder groups. Let's get started. Why do teams need to identify questions to explore? Teams can use their logic models and theory of change to brainstorm general questions of interest with input from agency leaders, evaluators, staff, system partners, and service recipients. They should identify questions that the team and stakeholders would like to answer about the intervention or implementation effort to help guide the direction of monitoring and evaluation for each piece they hope to understand better. The questions raised during brainstorming will shape what data is collected and how the data is analyzed to best answer the questions the team comes up with. It's important to note that often teams will partner with either internal or external evaluators to take their questions and then refine them into research questions that can be answered using measurement best practice. How do teams identify questions to explore? Teams should use the logic model they've developed as well as the team's theory of change to generate questions of interest. Questions related to the theory of change might include the information they're interested in related to the causal links. Questions regarding the logic model might have to do with the related activities, inputs, outputs, and outcomes that are anticipated in the short term, intermediate, and long term. Teams may identify more questions of interest than they have the capacity to explore and will need to work with leadership and other stakeholders to prioritize them. Selective questions should help teams improve the intervention and make decisions about the future of the effort. Teams should consider key areas when identifying questions to explore. One, fidelity questions. For example, were the intervention activities implemented as expected? If not, what changes can be made to help with this? Two, formative questions about the activities, outputs, or short-term outcomes. For example, did services reach the intended participants? To what extent did the intervention generate expected outputs? What factors affected implementation and outcomes? Did the intervention result in expected short-term outcomes? 
and three, summative questions about the intermediate and long-term outcomes. For example, did the intervention result in expected intermediate and long-term outcomes? Was fidelity to the model associated with better outcomes? And what target population characteristics impacted the outcomes? And other pertinent questions related to the change in implementation process or cost benefit of the intervention. For example, was the intervention cost effective? Has readiness for the implementation effort been assessed or changed over time? How did capacity building strategies affect implementation? How did the intervention impact organizational capacity? Let's take a look at an example together. In the home visiting program outlined in Appendix B of the Monitoring, Evaluating, and Applying Findings Brief, possible questions the team might want to explore might include questions on activities related to fidelity assessment, such as was the home visiting program delivered in a manner consistent with the program model? At the practice level, did staff implement the core components of outreach, home visits, screenings, and referrals? If not, what changes can be made to support fidelity? Questions related to the activities around outputs or short-term outcomes that might be associated with a formative evaluation, such as to what extent did the program reach eligible families? Were they satisfied with services? What factors affected implementation? Were there barriers to parent outreach efforts, home visits, or community service provision? How can these barriers be addressed? How could readiness be improved? And to what extent did parents and children receive needed community services and supports? What helped in connecting them to those services that met their needs? And questions related to intermediate or long-term outcomes that might be reflected in a sum summative evaluation. For example, as compared with families not receiving home visits, were families receiving home visits more likely to experience improvements in family functioning? In positive parent-child interactions? In child health and development? Did the home visiting program lead to reductions in reports of child abuse and neglect? Was fidelity to the home visiting program model associated with better outcomes? And how did parental characteristics, for example, a history of substance abuse, affect program outcomes? Let's take a moment to check in on what you've learned about identifying questions to explore. Why do teams identify questions to explore? Teams identify questions to help guide monitoring and evaluation, shape the data that is collected and analyzed, and support evaluation partners in developing measurable research questions. How do teams identify questions to explore? Teams should use their theory of change and logic model to generate questions of interest and then prioritize them based on capacity. What can help teams identify questions to explore? By considering as a team key areas they want to explore in fidelity, formative evaluation, summative evaluation, and other areas such as costs and key steps in the change and implementation process. Now take this a step further by reviewing the reflection questions for identified questions in your monitoring, evaluating, and applying findings workbook to connect what you've learned to your own experience. Up next is identify measures, data sources, and potential data collection methods. The fifth module in this series and the fourth essential function in setting the stage for monitoring and evaluation. This video was created by the Capacity Building Center for States, funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, Children's Bureau, under contract HHS P2332014 c The content of this video does not necessarily reflect the official views of the Children's Bureau.